Okay, this is going to be kind of a long tutorial, but this will be how to set up a comic book action so that you don't have to do this to every um, picture in your comic book or your graphic novel. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the tutorial for the comic book. I'm going to use the first one up here, comic book photo effect, photo effects, PS Hero, and that stands for Photoshop Hero, I believe. And so I'm going to get my tutorial up here. I'm going to make it a little smaller so I can work side by side and have my Photoshop open at the same time I'm working with this. Now what I'm going to do is go into Photoshop, and I've already preloaded a picture that I'm going to work with. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make an action. So I'm going to go to Window and go to Actions. And then over here, I'm going to make an action. Now you'll see I've done this before as comic book effect. So I'm going to make my own new comic book. So I'm going to go New Action. And I'm going to say Comical Book, just in case I've already done an action like that. You can call yours whatever you want, something about comic. So I hit Record. Now I'm going to start doing the action on um, my picture. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce the size of my picture. I notice a lot of you guys working with pictures and the, the half tone doesn't come out. So the first thing I'm going to go is image size. I'm going to go to image, image size, and then I'm going to change this to 1200. And that should give me about an 8 by, um, uh, excuse me, a 6 by 4 picture, kind of like, like you get it if you took it to uh, Costco or, or Walgreens or wherever you take your photos. So I'm going to say OK now. So I've reduced the size of my photo a little bit. Now I'm going to start following my tutorial. So the first thing my tutorial says is to um, first order of business will be to duplicate the original photo by pressing Command J and we'll duplicate the layer. So um, I'm going to go over to background and they say Command J on the keyboard, but you can also right click and say duplicate layer. So I'm going to do it that way so that you see the stuff on the screen. And then they say to call this, I believe, soften. Yes, so I'm going to name this soften and say OK. So now I've got two layers over here on my um, uh, layer palette. So now I'm going to scroll down to step three. Step three says, as this name implies, we'll now soften the layer using a blur filter. And so he says what you need to do now is go to um, filter, blur, surface filters, uh, surf, surface blur, excuse me. So I'm going to go to filter, blur, surface blur. And then I go there, and here's my picture of my two characters here. And it says a radius of 5 and threshold of 15 works nice. So we're going to rank this up to 5. So I can just type that in, or I can drag the thing. And he says threshold of 15. So I'm going to drag this up to 15 and then say OK. So now I've kind of blurred my characters there. Let me zoom that up a little bit by holding down Command and 0. Oops, too much. I'm going to pull that back. So I'm going to hold Command and minus. There we go. So now I've got soften done. Okay. So now I'm going down to step four. It says for the moment we're done with the soften layer, but we need the effect to be visible on our next layer. So we're going to be duplicating the layer again. And so I'm going to duplicate the layer here, or it's Command J again. And so instead of soften, you want to call this layer desaturated. Now desaturated means that you're going to take all the color out of it. Okay, desaturated, and um, I'm going to say OK. It says now we're going to choose Image Adjustments and Desaturate to strip the color. So you go up to Image, Adjustments, and down here is Desaturate. So that takes all the color out of the picture. OK, so now there's a Command sh uh, Shift U if you want to desaturate, but I'm just going to keep going using the mouse so you guys can see it on the screen. OK, now we're going to create a new layer. Um, by clicking the new layer icon at the bottom of the numbers palette, I mean layer palette. So down here, there's a create new layer right there. So I'm going to click, and that goes layer one. And I'm going to name that layer halftone. So I'm going to click in here, and uh, I'm going to click in uh, the wording on the palette right here, and I'm going to call this halftone. Okay, so now this next one's where people had trouble. Um, 
with step six. Okay, so I mean step five, the second part of step five. We're going to load the luminosity of our image as a selection. So you have to do this. You have to click over in the layers palette. There's a thing called channels. You have to click on channels, and then you hold the command key down while you click the RGB. And you'll notice over my picture, it's picked up some some um, whites and stuff like that. So I'm going to load the luminosity now. Go down to step six with the luminosity loaded, loaded as a selection like this. I'm going to click back over the layers tab in the layers palette and make sure the new halftone is selected. So I'm going to go back to layers and make sure I have halftone selected here. Now it, I'm going to invert the selection by choosing select and inverse. So go up here to select and go to inverse. Okay. And now I'm going to press the D key. And that makes these, see how my colors are white and blue? I need them to be black. So you need to click on this little icon, or you can type D on your keyboard. Okay? And that resets the swatches. Now, I've done it twice, but that doesn't matter. So now, with that loaded like that, I'm going to release, I'm going to press Option Delete Next. So holding the Option key on the keyboard. And here's the, here's the difference. There's two Delete keys up on your keyboard. It's the one on a PC that's normally called the backspace. If you use the delete key, this won't work. So I'm going to hit delete, or you'd normally hit backspace on a PC, and it does that. And you notice it changed my picture. This got dark and stuff like that. Okay, so now it says, lastly, release the selection by pressing Command D, or go up to select and go deselect. There's the Command D thing. So now our setup's complete and we can get to work and creating the effect. For the moment, let's turn off the top two layers by clicking the icon. So I call it poke them in the eye. So I'm going to turn off halftone and desaturate. Okay, so now we're working with the soften layer. Okay. And go down. So now I'm make sure I'm on soften over here in my layers palette. So now I go to eight. So soften layer will be acting as the color layer for the comic book effect. But at the moment it contains too much detail. So let's use one of the Photoshop's filters, and the filter they like is artistic cutout. So go to filter, go to artistic, and go to cutout. And this will take a little while to load. And our settings when it loads will be 8, 0, and 3. So up here in cutout, so I'm going to move this over so I can see my characters. So I'm going to go number of levels is 8. So I'm going to crank my levels all the way up to 8. Then I'm going to go simplicity to 0. So edge simplicity is 0. And then lastly, my uh, fidelity is three. So I'll go one, two, three. So there's my characters with the comic book effect created. So now I'm going to say OK to that. And so now I've got my comic effect on there. So now I'm going to go down to step nine. And it says, since the cutout filter is dull dark color, and typically comic books are vivid, Let's press Command J to duplicate the layer and switch the new layer's blend mode to um, soft blend mode to soft light. Okay, so I'm going to go over to soften and Command J creates it, but where you can duplicate the layer and um, I'll just leave that named soften copy and go up here and here's what it's talking about blend mode. Is there's a bunch of things right here. There's normal dissolve and so on. So it wants me to go to soft light. So I go to all soft light. And that kind of adds some vibrance to the picture, if you noticed. Okay, so now we're going to go to stop step 10. Now we're done with the softens layer. So click on the desaturate layer to select it. So now I'm going to click on desaturate. And I have to poke it in the eye or, you know, bring it to its visible again. So I click this. And now I've got my black and white picture here. So now. Uh, let's see, make sure I didn't leave anything out in step 10. So step 11 says the desaturate layer will now become the black outlines for our comic. So I'm going to go to Filter, Artistic, and Poster Edges. So get Filter, Artistic, and Poster Edges. So there's, there's our poster edges. I'll pull this again so I can see my actors. Okay, so the settings they want is 1, 1, and 1. So my edge thickness is 1, my edge intensity is 1, and my posterization is 1. So you see how this got this nice hard outline around their cheeks and so on? That gives it more of a comic book effect. So now I'm going to say OK. So now I've got that set. So now I go down to step 12, making sure I didn't leave anything out in step 11. 
Step 12 says, now let's change the layers blend mode to pin light so we can get the color to show through. Okay, so I go to desaturate, I go to normal, and I go down to pin light. Now our colors pop through, but I still got my really cool outlines around their cheeks, so it's starting to look more like a, like a, like a comic book drawing. Okay, so now I go to step 13. So we're done with the desaturate layer, so let's click on the halftone layer and make it visible. So I'll go to halftone. So now we see our halftone layer. And we're going to, um, uh, the effect of, let's first load the layer as a selection. Okay, so again, what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to click on the, um, oops, wrong thing, make sure I'm on halftone. I'm going to hold down the command key, and I'm going to click inside halftone, and it should load my luminosity again. See, like that? Okay, so now I've got it loaded. And with the layer loaded, I'm going to create what's called a layer mask. So down at the bottom of the um, uh, layers palette, let me pull this up so you can see it better closer. So right here is a layer mask. Oops, wrong one. There's the layer mask. It says create layer mask, but add layer mask is the same thing. So now I'm going to add a layer mask. Okay. And so now I've got a halftone layer mask. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to step 15, and I said with the layer loaded as selection, click on the create layer mask. Okay. Um, well, that's that um, step 15. Now it's time to create the halftone dot pattern will appear in the comic book. So from the main menu, chose, oh wait, make sure I'm clicked in the halftone, sorry. Then I'm going to go to uh, filter, pixelate, color halftone. So filter, pixelate, color halftone. And they want the numbers, he wants, to see, a eight for the maximum radius. And depending on the photo, you have to change that. So I'll we'll try eight, but if I don't like the dot, if I got too big a dot, I might drop it down or something. So I've got way too big a dot. So let me go, um, let me go edit undo, and let's try filter, um, pixelate color halftone, and let's drop that down to four. There we go. That's a little better, a better halftone. Okay. So now I'm going to go down here and it says because we're working on the layer max, not directly on the layer. Um, this will look better if we invert the layer mask. So I'm going to go Command I to invert the layer mask. Or you go to Image Adjustments and Invert. Okay, that's where that is. Okay, so there's my layer mask inverted. So now let's also change the way the layer next with layers below it, but changing this blend mode to soft light. So I'm going to go from here normal to soft light. So now some of the things pop through, and so you don't have the dots all over the faces and so on like that. So now I still got my halftone look, but uh, it looks a little cleaner. So now uh, I'm going to go down to step 17, and it says the overall effect, sometimes a little darker than he prefers. I actually like this color, the, the lighting, but I'm going to go up to image and adjustments anyway and show you where this is. So go to, whoops, I forgot to create my curves. Excuse me. Up, actually, I go up here and I click on curves, and that creates a curves layer. And then you just click in this little guy right here, and you can make him lighter or darker. See that? So I'm gonna I'm gonna put it actually down a little bit. I don't. I want mine looks a little too white, maybe because of the T-shirt. But um, that's how you use curves. This right here, you can move this up or down to adjust that. Okay. So now I'm down to step 19. Now I'm going to create a back outline. Now this will freak you out a little bit, not freak you out, but but have had people worry about this. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to create an outline. So I'm going to fill the layer with the foreground color by pressing Option Delete. Now wait a minute. I say to make a new layer. Oh, I'm, yeah, that's right. Create a new layer called um, Outline. So I'm going to go to New Layer and call this New Layer Outline and say OK. And now I'm going to fill that layer with um, the foreground color by pressing Option Delete. So I just go Option, and remember it's the backspace delete, and I go Option Delete. Now all of a sudden my picture is completely blank, but we'll fix that in a second. So now you go to Image, excuse me, go to Layer, Layer Style, and you go to Stroke. Okay, and then you'll see right here it's, it wants 30 
inside at 100 rho pasty. So I'm going to go 30. Ah, I'm going to type it. 30 tab inside and 100 things. So I'm going to say OK. Now the last thing, it's kind of a little confusing here. It says, we'll lower its fill opacity to zero. So if you go over to fill and click this and go to zero, now we get your nice outline here. The outline's a little thick because my picture's a little smaller, but that gives you an outline around the picture. Okay? And so I go down here, and now I've got my image of stroke applied. And then the last thing, I'm going to add a comic book um, effect. Uh, you don't have to get the thing they talk about there. So what you do is to do the words, um, uh, Photoshop has a cool little thing called the custom shape tool. So you go to custom shape and you uh, actually, and then you go up here and you click and go all and um, append. And then you can go down here and right here is the bubbles. So you click in here and you draw your bubble like that. And then I don't like the fact that it's a um, black outline. I want it white. So I'm going to click white here. And now my comic's complete. Now I'm not going to type anything here because I don't want it to do that for every picture. So now I'm going to stop my action because I don't want to save it like this. And now I'm going to go, but I am going to save it. So I'm going to go File, Save As. And I'm going to make myself a new folder on my desktop called Comic Work and create that. And then I'm going to save it as a PSD, of course. So there's my um, comic book. So now what's cool is I can take this, close this, go to um, a folder here. It's got some other pictures. So let me find another really quick picture here. Uh, that one's got too many characters. Dang it. Here, let me. I should have thought about this early. Let's go to this one. So I'm going to open this in Photoshop. And here's the coolest thing about this. I'm going to go over here to Actions, and I'm going to set up um, Comical Book, and I'm going to run that action on this new photo, and it should do all the stuff I did to it. Let's see if it does. And there it is. Now this one's a little dark, and that's why I don't like to save it, so remember what I can do is I can go to my Curves layer, and I can adjust the light on that, and make that a little lighter, and then also I have my, um, I can use my Move tool, I can right click on my shape here, and I can make it look like, you know, he's saying that line, or whatever. And um, again, some of these are a little dark, so I might even go to my Soften Copy, and go image adjustments and curves and see if I can you know do some some bending here to lighten this up there we go it's a little bit lighter okay so that way you're able to work with your your comic whoops work, work with your comic without um, losing it so now I go file save as put it in my um, comic work folder and save that one and that's the tutorial.